Hello and welcome to the Gwendolyn S. and Colbert I. King Endowed Chair in Public Policy Lecture Series. This is the third consecutive term that Miss Donna Brazil will lead the lecture series for us. I'm Debbie Jarvis. Welcome. I'm the Senior Vice President of Corporate Relations for Howard University. And on behalf of all of us here at Howard University, we welcome you and hope you enjoy tonight's lecture. Now, the theme of the series this year is Make the Future Your Own, Building Forward Together. The event today will kick off the series uh, for this semester, and it is entitled From the Hilltop to the White House, Lifting as We Climb. Now, each of the panelists is a recent Howard University graduate who now works in the Biden-Harris administration. And, of course, Donna Brazil is the best person to engage them and have a conversation with them. So without further ado, Donna Brazil. Thank you, Senior Vice President Jarvis, for your kind and gracious introduction. Well, welcome to the Fall 2021 King Lecture Series here at the historic campus at Howard University. The theme this semester is Make the Future Your Own, Building Forward Together. Our series of programs and lectures will bring students, faculty, and guest speakers together to exchange ideas and explore common interests on some of the most important policy issues facing our nation and abroad. We are honored to kick off this fall session and this town hall titled From the Hilltop to the White House. They are at the White House. With three amazing and talented graduates of Howard University who are members of the Biden-Harris administration. They are Emma Eatman, Howard University class of 2019 and the current press secretary of the Department of Labor. Megan Lynch, Howard University's class of 2014 and the current press secretary at the Department of Housing and Urban Development and Silas Woods, Howard University's class of 2017, the veteran researcher and the office of Vice President Kamala Harris, the Vice President of the United States and a proud a graduate of Howard University. And also, Mr. Woods worked as a senior research fellow for the Biden for President campaign. So I wanna again thank and welcome you back to campus. This is your campus, this is your home. And so I want to start by talking about how did you get here? What made you not only choose Howard, but also choose what you're doing today? Because you all are doing such amazing work. I'll start with Silas since we'll start with the man in the room. <laughs> well, thank you so much for uh, having me here. It's great to be here. It's great to um, be able to come back to, always great to come back to Howard. So um, I think, um, you know, Howard was the best decision I ever made, or at least one of the best decisions, and I'll tell anyone who will listen. Um, I think one of the best things about it was that I always had an interest. I grew up in Chicago, so my interest in governance and politics and just came to bubble to the surface when I was looking for a school. And uh, what better school to go to than one that will provide you with this mm -hmm. kind of community, but also put you right in the center of the action. We're in our nation's capital, and it can't be beat. Um, it's just been amazing. So. That's great. Yeah. So I want some insights also from uh, Megan and Emma in terms of how did you arrive at who and where you are today, starting with your journey here at Howard University. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Ms. Brazil, for having us, and thank you, Howard University. Um, so I actually went to undergrad at North Carolina State University uh, in North Carolina, and I went to Howard for law school. So I came great. straight from um, undergrad to law school at Howard University. Um, and, and I, similar to Silas, decided to go to Howard because I wanted to go to a school that's nationally recognized, producing leaders, particularly black lawyers, um, with a strong network. But I also wanted to be in the nation's capital. Uh, I knew that I would want to get in, go into public service, and um, I didn't know exactly what that path would look like at the time, but um, I figured D.C. is the best place to be location-wise, so that's, that's ultimately how I decided to uh, attend Howard for law school. After that, I, I went to Capitol Hill 
Um, I, I did several years um, in the U.S. House of Representatives where I met Emma. Um, and then I moved to the Senate where I actually worked for our now Vice President Kamala Harris. Um, and then moved to uh, HUD where I'm currently um, serving as press secretary. And I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you to just tell the audience and the students who you're working for. Oh yes, our great, great secretary, Marsha L. Fudge. <laughs> from the great state of Ohio, yes, Cleveland, Ohio, 11 Congressional District. Emma, uh, Department of Labor, I mean, you've come a long way as yeah. well since graduation. Tell us a little bit about your journey. Well, I actually knew I wanted to enter political communications since I was in high school. It was kind of, I'm kind of one of those weird people who knew what I wanted to do from very early on. Um, and I am so lucky that I landed at Howard. Um, I, I I'm lucky that I was surrounded by so many black people, black women, who kind of pushed me to the top. Um, and uh, like Megan said, I, I started interning on the Hill senior year um, and uh, was able to be hired as part-time staffer when I was finishing my senior year at Howard, um, which was a very busy semester. But um, And that is all due to my network here at Howard. I would absolutely not be in the position that I am now without the professors, and the people that they introduced me to um, here at Howard. So I owe everything to this institution. That is so great. Megan, you were, at, uh, you were on the campus of Howard University Law School. I'm sure you had an opportunity to interact with the students here on campus. Tell us a little bit about your experience, both at the law school as well as when you interacted with some of the students here on campus. I mean, I think um, if I were to put it into one word, I would just say it was a rich experience. Mm -hmm. It was so rich. Um, you know, coming from North Carolina to, to just be immersed in, in Howard's campus and the law school campus, meeting students and professors from across the world um, was just so eye-opening. And to see particularly black people, black women at every level. Um, so it was just a rich experience. It was, you know, one of the, as Emma mentioned, you know, just having a, leaving Howard and having such a strong network. You can't go to any, probably any country, but especially any state now, <laughs> without um, being able to, to lock into that network mm -hmm. that we have. Um, so I think that was you know, one of the greatest takeaways that I had with my experience. That's great. Salas, you have traveled extensively uh, since leaving this great campus. Yeah. So I am sure you have kept in touch with some of your professors and some of your mentors here. So tell us a little bit about your experience on campus and what did you gain, what insights? So uh, Howard, just again, to echo both of the sentiments here, the network that you get provided with is incredible. Um, the classes, there are still things that I use today that I picked up in my political science classes um, from state and local government to political economy that just bring me more present into the space that I'm now in. Um, even in my, as I was progressing in my career, as I was leaving campus, you know, you never really leave campus, you bring it with you. <laughs> you kind of bring yes. your experiences and. Um, the alumni support system, the alumni um, that mm -hmm. are able to offer insight into kind of the next steps, it's totally invaluable. I mean, um, I also was able to pledge my fraternity here, and that was another. Um, Which Alpha fraternity? Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity okay. Incorporated. Fraternity uh, of Dr. Martin Luther King, that's all I know. Dr. Martin Luther King, <laughs> our alum here, Thurgood Marshall, and so many more. Um, and have that opportunity to also have that Howard community and that those communities come together to help support and just give me insight, give me an idea of what next steps would be out there because so much, um, you, you don't know all the time. You kind of begin to figure it out as you go along. Mm -hmm. Emma, you were a member of the Student Body Association, the Student Government mm -hmm. Association, mm -hmm. am I correct? Yes, yes. And you must yes. have really played, you, you were very active, I'm sure, on campus affairs. So tell us a little bit about some of the things you did on campus. So I was actually talking to Silas about this before we came out. I was minimally involved because I was interning so much during school, so uh -huh. student government was the only thing that I did. But um, during election years and even off years, we were working on getting more um, polling stations around DC. And um, I mean, that was such an insight into how involved Howard is in the community. Um, and just not only do we help our own community, but you know we need to help our, our community that we're living in and interacting in. So, um, but I spent so much of my time I spent every semester and every summer interning in, in various roles, um, uh, so it was a little difficult to manage <laughs> grades and student body life, and I'm happy to talk more about that too, um, just how to balance it, because I'm sure everybody's Yeah, because I want to get into internships, because yeah. I'm sure many of the students are interested in how to 
leave campus in terms of interning yeah. and the opportunities, but I, I, I have to talk about your experience interning for then Senator Kamala Harris, and of course your experience working for the first female black woman uh, of Asian, um, of South Asian descent, mm -hmm. uh, as Vice President of the United States, and you are there. You are part of this history-making moment, and you were part of the journey. So from the hilltop to the White House, you two both exemplify that journey. Tell us. It's something that you walk in every day. You know, it, it doesn't get, it never gets old. It doesn't, it doesn't, the idea that I am playing a small part in something that is so significant um, doesn't lose you, isn't lost on you. Um, the fact that you are able to say that you're, you're stepping, you're part of this legacy that for, just coming from Howard is just absolutely incredible. And the team that, um, being a part of the team that the vice president has assembled and how dedicated and how committed everyone is to not only the responsibilities that she holds as vice president, but that, but all of our kind of mutual commitment to making sure that this is, um, as she said before, not the la not uh, not the last one. That's this right. Is, the door has been kicked open in many ways, and I'm just glad to be able to help hold it open. <laughs> there you go. Um, I love that. And Megan, Megan, I mean, I think of Thurgood Marshall. Of course, I think of mm, my good friend, my mentor, Vernon Jordan, yes. and now yeah. Kamala Harris and Megan Lynch. I mean. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, absolutely. <laughs> I, I you, you, you're you're I part of that not. line of that legacy. Now you got the grad, you got the degree, and you have the opportunity. W tell us about this experience of helping to not only shape history but help to make history for not just black people but the entire country and the world. Absolutely. I I mean, I think you know to your point. Ms. Brazil, I, we just have such a, a deep legacy and to be at this moment where we have our first black woman vice president is just so, I don't know, I, like you just have no words um, mm. to how special it is. Um, and, and to Silas's point, just having played even a small role um, when she was in the Senate as, as her press secretary in the Senate was just amazing. Um, and, and she worked so hard for our country and it, and it, you know, just seeing that leadership in action is just so motivating. Um, it makes me want to, you know, be as involved as I can be. Um, and it, and it gives, and it gives me hope at the end of the day. It gives me hope that we will have a brighter future because we do have leaders who are working around the clock, um, and who, who look like us, who have had our experiences yeah. most importantly. And so they know, um, they know what, what these things mean to us. So I want to take you back a little bit um, to that period of time when you were 18. Uh, perhaps on campus, clearly you were on campus by then, the law school mm -hmm. campus. But what would you tell your 18-year-old self today that perhaps you didn't know? And don't tell me it, <laughs> Facebook, because trust me, I know. I tell my 18-year-old <laughs> self that I had more than a Rolodex. Oof. Uh, but what yeah. would you tell your 18-year-old self, especially because we have so many incoming freshmen here at Howard University. They're trying to, as you said uh, earlier, adjust to being in Washington, D.C., the most powerful capital in the universe, if, as far as I know. And you're meeting all of these great people. So what do you tell your 18-year-old self today that you didn't, perhaps no one told you? Hmm. You know, I would actually say I remember being so unsure. I knew what I wanted to do, but I didn't know what path I wanted to take. So I tried to mirror my path so closely to people who seemed like they had everything figured out. So I would tell my 18 year old self that you can create your own path, right? You don't have to be yes. exactly like somebody else. You can take advice and, you know, mentorship from people. I, of course, would suggest that, but um, your path is always going to be different than somebody else's. So just enjoy the ride. That's great. Salas? Um, there's so many things I could probably tell my 18 year old self, but um, one of them is that um, you value every single connection you make because mm. um, you never know, um, you just never know where someone and who someone, how you can help someone, how someone can help mm. you. Um, doesn't matter if they're older than you, if they're, you know, the seniors that are coming, the seniors, or if they're the freshmen that will eventually follow you. Just yes. always take, a special appreciation for where we are here at Howard 
and also just in DC. I just want to make sure that I remember that. That's personal. <coughs> That's great. Megan. I think I would tell my 18 year old <laughs> self two things. First, that everything will be okay. Oh. I think I spent so much time, <laughs> I see some of you nodding your head, like I spent so much time worrying that I was going to fail or that, yeah. um, you know, I wouldn't get into the school mm. I wanted to get into or I wouldn't get that A in the class that I need to get the A in. Um, and while those things are important, everything is going to be okay. I will end up where I'm meant to be. And, and I want to, you know, the students that are listening, that is exactly what will happen. Just hustle, you know, stay focused, do what works for you and everything, you will be where you are meant to be. And then the second thing I would say is Good. soak in the moments. I think we move so fast, especially those of us that are um, like really like into our careers or into our, our studies, we are moving so fast. Like if you're thinking about going to medical school, you're probably spending you know every moment like, I just need to get to the next step. I need to get to medical school, right? Um, at least that's how I was when I was trying to get into law school. And you're just always thinking about the next thing. And I think finally I'm, I'm at a place where I'm realizing like, oh, I really wish I would have soaked in um, all the resources and opportunities that my, my mm -hmm. university offered or that, um, you know, I spent, I just soaked in all those, all those moments that I've, I've been a part of even more um, and cherish them even more um, because that's really what life's about. And so I think I would tell myself to also soak in those moments when I find myself like at graduation, right? Yeah. And, and not to always be thinking about the next thing. So um, any, uh, any one of you thought, of, uh, thought about at 18, uh, running for public office or serving in, in public office? I'm just here just in case I need to gear up for another job. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Not me. You're not you? gonna run for office? You never no. thought about a career in public service, although your path indicates that you have a great love for public policy? Yes, I, I like supporting, um, <laughs> supporting roles, supporting people who are in, in those positions. I've never thought about running though. Have, you, have either of you? Salas. I think, uh, have I thought about it? Yeah. I mean, I'm at Howard and leadership is such a core part, you know, <laughs> yeah. playing an active role is such a core part, but it starts with service. I mean, getting involved is the first step period to anything that you do and so I think that was, that's where really where my heart is set and right now is just enjoying the moment and figuring it out and continuing with it. You know what's so interesting, Megan, before you answer that question, um, you all have uh, come of age in a time when we've had America's first black president and now America's first female vice president who happens to be African-American proud graduate of this great institution as well as a woman of South Asian descent. So think about that. I mean, Thurgood Marshall yeah. created the bridge mm -hmm. that got us to this, this part of our journey. And Vernon Jordan and many others fought for those individual as well as civil rights to get us to being able to get in the room. Uh, and now we're trying to demand our seats at the table, permanent seats, not folding chairs anymore. Mm, that's right. No. Mm. So, as you describe, not just your experience, um, Megan, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the lawyer because that was the dream I had at 18, but I got too involved in campaigns. So mm -hmm. you got one on me and I love that. <laughs> but as, but you're, that, you're carrying that extra torch and you're carrying the names as I mentioned earlier. So how do you begin to um, tell this generation, how do you, talk to them about how do they set their goals now so that when they are mid-20s, early 20s, or my best, what I call my best decade, 60. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I love, I'm, I'm, live, I'm living my best decade. But how do you describe this to young students and young people that you meet and engage to say, get involved. You need to start thinking about this. You need to begin to position yourself. What do you tell them? First, I think I, I would say to know to know that rich history, to know the 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 path who laid that path for all of us, um, you know, know the the Vernon Jordans of the world, know the Donna Brazils, um, you know, and so know those people, know how their backgrounds, read their books, get to know them whether they're they're still with us or not, um, because maybe that'll help you start to think about kind of what Emma was saying, you know, fashion yourself so you can think about, you know, okay, how do I leave a legacy? It might not have to look just like theirs. Our fight is a little different than what that fight might have been at, at, their, t at their time. Um, but I think, 
knowing your history is the only way to move forward. And so that's, that's probably where I would start. Is um, Emma, Silas, would you yeah. like to add something? And it's, n it's knowing your history and then also recognizing, to be honest, we're not that far removed. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I bring it back to the campus because we're doing hilltop to hilltop to hill to mm -hmm. White House. And when you're walking, you're literally walking on in the same mm -hmm. space yes. that was occupied by these legends, these giants. Absolutely. So you can uh, put your name in the mix. You can say we share uh, something common. You know, it's a, our, the center of Howard is that long walk and we all take <laughs> it and we all have done it since the beginning of this university. Don't feel like you're not di directly connected to that. Mm -hmm. You should feel that anytime you walk into Founders, anytime you walk into any of the halls here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know I do, mm -hmm. I, even coming back as an alum. Mm -hmm. yeah. Emma? And lean on the people that came before you, not you know so far behind you, right? We're all here to support each other. Um, and I would say, you know, know your history and also um, lean on the people around you because we're such a tight community. Um, like Megan said, you can't go anywhere without meeting a Howard alum, <laughs> like <Yes>. literally <laughs> anywhere. Um, and, and lean on that, right? Because with history comes, you know, familiarity and community and, and I think that's important. We are, we're going to open this conversation to our students as well as those who are online. So get your questions ready. But before they, um, they come forward, I, I got to ask a question. This is a very tough and challenging year. Um, COVID is still with us. Uh, we, climate change is, is upon us. Uh, the president and vice president decided it was time for America to end the quote unquote endless war. Um, this criminal justice reform. So how do you try to help your, um, your boss figure out how to get their, their work done? I noticed that your boss, uh, my good friend, Marsha Fudge has now just initiated a new campaign to, to try to decrease the number of homeless people in this country. I know that your boss, a good friend of mine, the, the former mayor of Boston, Mr. Walsh, he is so invested now in getting people back on, the tra mm -hmm. back on track to g get back to work and open mm -hmm. up our, uh, our offices. And clearly, you know, uh, your boss, our vice president, <laughs> will be on The View this coming Friday. I know, but I, she is going to be on The View. So, but you got important jobs. So how do you prepare for your daily life uh, working with such great principals? Oof. You wanna start Emma or Silas <laughs> or Megan? Who wants to start? I can start. Um, I think part of it's being informed, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm, I know Meg, Megan and I share the same role, but different departments. Um, there's a lot of reading involved, right? Being aware of what's going on, right? Not just in your orbit, but around so you can be aware of it. Um, and also giving our perspective. Um, you know, we actually, I don't, I don't know how it fares with the Obama administration. Um, I'm fairly certain it's more than the Trump administration, but we have a lot of black people and black women and communications roles in particular in the Biden-Harris administration. That's great. Um, and I think being in these positions is important because it helps us shape the narrative around, um, I mean, in housing, it's it's very obvious and also in, in labor, I know, I mean, it's been disproportionately hard on communities of color, especially black people during the pandemic. And yes. um, that type of messaging is extremely important. So um, just bringing my whole self to work is And I can important. tell because uh, in addition to reading papers in the United States, I read the Financial Times and other papers. Yeah. And I noticed that in the la latest uh, labor uh, reports, they are highlighting that while there are a lot of jobs that are available, blacks are still having a hard time. Black people are having mm -hmm. a hard time getting those jobs. So I wanna thank you for making sure that those who, who have left the labor force are still uh, being counted on uh, and they need help. So I know that's some of your work as well. <laughs> and as I mentioned, your principal is embarking on, uh, I, I don't know where to start. <laughs> Marsha Fudge is, I mean, Secretary Fudge is doing everything, everything from tackling redlining mm -hmm. to uh, housing affordability. Did you know, I'm sure you, you know this, <laughs> that uh, your department just sued uh, uh, one of the HUD uh, regional offices for discrimination 
a, a, a young black man had two children and they would not allow him to get a, a public housing uh, unit. They made him find a more expensive place because he had small children. And who took that on? Secretary Fudge. So I know you are busy. We are staying busy, but, but um, it's easy when you work for an administration like ours, a principal that, that I'm blessed to, to work with. Um, as you've already highlighted, Secretary Fudge is just a, a true public servant. And, um, you know, when she comes to work every day and she wants, she's ready to, to you know, go hard for, for us, but for all Americans, yes. she's really about finding the solutions. She's launching new things, like she just launched today, as you mentioned, um, How's America initiative to tackle homelessness in mm -hmm. our country. Um, so every day she's showing up. And so when you have uh, someone at the top who's showing up like that, you yeah. have no choice but to show up, you know, go as hard as you can and then come back and do it again tomorrow. Shots in the arms, the stimulus check. Yes. I can go on and on in terms of the what the, the administration is delivering to the American people. But you go there every day, and I'm sure on weekends, nights and weekends, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty familiar with your <laughs> workload. But tell, tell me, how do you help her get, a, get her job done as vice president? How do you help uh, Vice President Harris? I know you have a big job research, so you gotta, you gotta put the pencil and paper together on all these important issues before she gets it. What I'll say is that this is an administration that very much values um, the accuracy and being correct mm -hmm. and trying to... We know, call that facts. Yes. Well, that's it. Facts, <laughs> facts that matter. Consider. Facts matter, exactly. <laughs> but also, um, I think the biggest thing is being part of the team, a team that is so, excuse me, <coughs> a team that is so dedicated. I've said it before and I will again keep saying that you bring your best game, you bring your best self, you be fully, you're fully present in the work that you do because you know how important these issues are. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I mean, and you, and you don't get tired of it because you're in it. I'm an American just like any other. <laughs> and so these issues are, affect me as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I just try and be as present as possible and rely on the amazing team, the experience that came before me. And that's how I try to best serve both in my role and just, you know, in my position, <laughs> however that's I can. That's great. Um, I want to uh, take some time out to talk to the audience. We have some amazing students uh, here with us today, the uh, chapter president of the NAACP. We have leaders uh, from uh, some of our uh, political science department and others. So uh, why don't we give one of the students the microphone and we can uh, uh, bring up a couple of questions. I know they have some questions. And state your name for the audience and also for our panelists. Hello, my name is Hi. Shannon Hill. I am a junior strategic legal and management communications major, sociology minor from the great state of Texas. And I currently serve hey. as Howard University's NAACP president. I really want to first of all, thank you all for coming and sharing this knowledge and wisdom for us. It's very appreciated. Um, I definitely heard some things I needed to hear today. And I just wanted to ask, because I know speaking for myself and speaking for many of my peers, we leave this campus hoping that not only will our voices be heard, but they'll also be impactful directly upon policy and changing the institutional nature of our nation. So do you all feel as if in your positions, especially um, you coming from Howard Law, which is where I aspire to go, um, and you feel like you're making the difference that you imagined you were making, you would be making when you were, you know, walking the same historical roads and pathways. You want to direct it to one of the panelists? Uh, or? Really anyone? <laughs> I, all right. I can, I, I can take and say that. I think even I, I, I absolutely believe that I'm ma I feel the impact that I'm making every day I go into work. Um, I feel like I'm part of something larger than myself. Um, and that, again, stems directly from Howard um, and into the internships I've had, into the um, other jobs I've had within the political space, and then now in public service. Um, so I, I, I really do feel like the, feel there's an impact, and I feel like Howard carried that in me. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I definitely do. And I think I also feel that I have so much more that I can do because I went to Howard, right? And because I have the network that I do. Um, so it's, it, you never feel like you, okay, I've done enough, right? There's always more. Um, and 
the more that you do, the more that we meet people like you and uh, we connect with people who are, are at Howard and want to go to Howard Law or get into positions like this and giving back um, to our community. So um, absolutely, 100%. Great answer. And I'll just add, um, I think one of the key reasons why I wanted to get into not just you know, public service or, or I guess politics or even communications, one of the key reasons was that I wanted a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we are talking about, and in law school, if you decide to, to go, and I hope you do, and I hope you go to Howard Law School, um, in law school, you're, you're learning about the law, right? And so I started thinking like, well, I want to be on the other side of, of the laws. I want to be a part of the, in the room when the laws are being made, which is what drove me to Capitol Hill. I want to be at the tables where for so long, there was no one that looked like us mm -hmm. speaking up. When a lot of these policies, we see it, you said you're from Texas, we saw how that looks in Texas, right? Mm. We see it all the time in every state, I mean, law, you know, and with, so we need people at those tables too. Um, and so I want to be that person for the girls, that, the girls that are coming after me. Um, you know, there's so many people that, that did it before, you know, and laid the path for, for us. So, so that's definitely one of the key reasons why I wanted to do it. And I'm, I think once you're in those rooms, you need to open your mouth and speak up and say, I don't like how this sounds. I don't like, you know, how does this impact, you know, these certain communities? It's on, it's on all of us to, to raise those things when we are at mm -hmm. the table. Before we go, thank you so much, and thank you for your great leadership. Uh, by the yes. way, uh, a few weeks ago, about a month ago, we uh, held a rally on Capitol Hill in support of the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, and I am so proud, Shannon, that you played a leading role in helping to pull that event together. Once again, Howard University leading the way forward. Before yes. we go to perhaps a question from one of the students online or another member of the audience, I want to talk about, you all mentioned internships mm -hmm. and, and getting that first step uh, or making that first step from campus into your careers in, in public service. What was that moment like uh, in, in terms of applying to Capitol Hill to work for uh, members of Congress? What was that experience like? And you can share some of that insights also with the students. Well, I will tell you, so this is where, I, and I know we keep saying network. <laughs> And I, I get tired when people tell me, oh, the network, networking, networking. Yeah. But I will say, especially <laughs> when you're trying to get in on places like Capitol Hill, right? Um, it can be you. It can be very hard to navigate. You know, how do how do I get How do I get my resume to the top of the pile, right? Or how do I get into an office that I would prefer to be in? Or how do I work on the issues that I want to work on when I'm just fresh out of school? Or I'm still in school. Um, that's where your network comes in. That's where you start taking those mm -hmm. those coffees or I guess now Zoom or, or whatever you need to do, right. connecting, and there are alum everywhere. <laughs> and I have not had, I've never had someone email me back and say, actually, I do not want to meet with you, <laughs> right? Yeah. Reach out, identify, go through LinkedIn. I used to spend hours when I was just trying to figure out my career, just going through LinkedIn to Emma's point, finding people who kind of were in path, <laughs> going on paths that I wanted to go in. And I'd be like, oh, they look like they, they all went through Capitol Hill, right? And then I would be like, okay, what, mem what kind of members were they working for mm -hmm. who, that was giving them their start? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let me just shoot them a message. Um, so you didn't just apply uh, with your home state congressperson. You went that beyond is, that. That is a route, but go beyond because you have the network. Mm -hmm. You have the network. Go, go a step further and lean on, the, on your network, um, even if it's just to get advice. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you've gotten an interview already because you're just an incredible candidate. Um, but maybe it's, you know, let me email Emma and just, you know, see what she thinks about, about, you know, you know, how, what this role would look like for me or, or how I can use this to, to, you know, move into something I really want to do or, or what have you. So lean on your network. I would definitely. And, and I learned, uh, quite honestly, last year when, um, the then vice president was looking for, um, a capable, uh, running mate that, um, the fact that. Kamala Harris had her line sisters mm. and had her other sisters from AKA. Uh, then Senator Harris was really, you know, <laughs> a front runner because people were talking about her mm -hmm. as vice president. So, you know, I'm got, I, I got to ask you since you are a member of the Alpha <laughs> Phi Alpha <laughs> fraternity. <laughs> um, and we talking about networks. I mean, what, what, what is that network like 
for young students on campus today who are <laughs> thinking about becoming a member of the Divine Nine. What is that network like in terms of your future capabilities of reaching out and finding mentors and so forth? Well, what I'll say is that just like um, all of the Divine Nine organizations have a have a commitment to service. So it's a wonderful opportunity to explore, a wonderful opportunity to look at if that's something that you believe, in, in, if service is something that you're passionate about, I definitely always say take a look and do your research and be informed because it's a beautiful path that will take you to so many opportunities to be a public servant, to be a servant. Um, but I will also say that um, just being the best Howard student you can possibly be um, to for yourself, whatever that means to you, and I just wanted to um, trend and, and speak on the same type of uh, theme. I loved hearing the Howard intro. Yeah. The Howard intro is more than just an introduction. It really goes back to speaking up because Howard alum are everywhere, but as long as you're speaking up and you're talking, someone will hear, someone will listen, someone will, be enga will engage, and those opportunities will be, I didn't know that you were interested in uh, government, but uh, you were talking about what you, who you are, what you do already, and what you want to do or plan to do. And that can take you so, so many places. Um, I interned on the Hill for Senator Durbin. And it was in discussion with alum that I said, I'm interested in this, that it was like, well, there are opportunities on the Hill that might be available to you. So begin looking at these avenues and tapping those LinkedIn's and making those coffees and calls. So I just want to say that like Howard itself has an amazing network the uh, Divine Nine is one avenue that you can explore for that. Um, of course, I love and I'm partial to my fraternity, but all of them, again, are committed <laughs> really? to service. You don't say. <laughs> Phi Beta Sigma, I'm bring Kappa. <laughs> all of them. All of them. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, but Emma, I mean, you have a background in what, uh, public relations mm -hmm. and poli science and, mm -hmm. I mean, looking for internship uh, in, in those fields. I mean, was that easy? No. It was not. Okay. <laughs> um, not by myself, at least, right? right? So I relied on my network. And I was a, I was a Slim Z major, and I was a poli-sci minor. Um, and when I first started interning, I actually took state and local government, and my professor, Dr. Grant, introduced me to Melanie at the NAACP, and she introduced mm -hmm. me to my mentor, and I've relied on her ever since. And that was back in freshman, sophomore year of college. Um, and I did several internships with nonprofits until I eventually interned on the Hill um, my senior year. Um, and I will say to, you know, interning is important. I would say it's quality over quantity. I don't think I would recommend people intern every semester like I did. That was probably a little much. Um, <laughs> and it was very difficult. Um, but I would say, um, do it all, right? Because you have four years, and the thing that not every school has is that they're in DC, mm -hmm. right? True. So every other school, every other student, every other big school across the country is descending on DC in the summer, and it's really competitive to get a summer internship. But you have yeah. fall and spring semester, right? Mm -hmm. So work your schedule around the ability to intern and get those credits and do that networking and go to coffees during the week, right? Because no, not every student across the country has that opportunity. Um, so that would be my biggest piece of advice is take you know, the opportunity. You're in DC for four years and everybody has that. That's a great, that's a great recommendation. I can't think of any yeah. more. But I guess it's time for me to begin to, to wrap it up unless another student have a question. I Go ahead, sir, get up, young man. First, thank you guys for all being here. My name is Ryan Penson. I am a junior political science major, legal communica uh, communications minor from upstate New York. And um, I'm glad we were talking about just internships just there. Um, I'm curious to know, uh, having worked in like, I know you personally, Ms. Brazil, ha uh, have worked on the public sector and the private sector side of it. And I'd be love to know if either of you, any of you guys have also done that. Right now, I'm an intern in a political communications firm on the mm -hmm. private side. Mm -hmm. I also worked on, uh, interned on the Hill as well my freshman year. So like learning the experience of like private versus public, what, what um, line you wanna cross when you are graduating from Howard, where you wanna end up going with that. Um, I'd love to hear about your experiences with that as well. Well, as a former chief of staff to a member of Congress, <laughs> it was very important to look for uh, an 
I did significant outreach to Howard University, UGC, and other campuses because I wanted to make sure that my member had the best of the best, people who were living in the community and had ties to the community, but also they were part of the campus environment. That was a very important. The other role I thought I would play as a Hill staffer was to encourage other members to hire HBCU students because back in the day, and I know I can date myself, I came to Washington, D.C. 40 years ago, and I was probably the only black intern from my beloved home state of Louisiana. And so mm -hmm. as I began to pursue my career, I thought it was important to encourage other Southern offices because, by the way, we are, with, with one exception, we have Southern roots. Mm -hmm. And so that was very, very important. So I look for people with a, a different type of experience. Not everyone who had to come from the same, you know, you know, Harvard, Ivy League schools, because I'm like, you know, Howard is the, mm -hmm. you know, the Harvard, mm -hmm. okay, in my life, all right? Just like I would say the same thing when I was down in Louisiana, when they say, well, you're going to LSU. I said, well, I got a scholarship, but Southern is just as important as LSU. So I think you, you raise a great question, but it, we have to learn how to reach people who are making these hiring decisions so that they are looking at HBCU graduates, they are looking at HBCU students, but you also have to push yourself in the door. Mm -hmm. And I think you all are absolutely right. You have to network. Mm -hmm. Find someone with some tie to Howard University or some tie to that fraternity or that club or S SGA or whatever, that NAACP, that's so important. But what other advice would you like to give this young man? Um, so to, to your question about um, whether you should go right into public service or at a private company, that was that your, so um, I actually did work at a, um, at a private organization for a year and a half before going to Capitol Hill. Um, and I was at a political strategy firm, so yeah. a little similar to you. Um, and it was nice. I mean, I think it depends on, on what you're looking for in the moment. I think the, the big takeaway, and, and I think that there is a way to serve in that capacity too, mm -hmm. um, and, and serve multiple clients and, and what have you. Um, I think that the biggest uh, advice I would give if you're trying to decide between the two is just really like, lay out the pros and cons. <laughs> that might be kind of lawyerly of me, but just like make a list um, and, and talk, to, talk to mentors, run it by people you trust who have been there. Um, it'll come to you. I think sometimes I'll go to sleep with something on my heart and I'll wake up and be like, I need to take that job. I need to take that opportunity. Don't close any door though. I would say do not close any door. Uh, explore every opportunity that comes your way because you never know. I never knew that I would take the path that I've taken. So you'll never know where you'll end up. Thanks, great uh, advice. I, I can talk a little bit to that too because I'm glad that you're interning at both to get you know, a taste of both. I think that's really important. I interned in a, at a firm the summer before I graduated and then I ended up at Capitol Hill. And the reason I ended up at Capitol Hill is because of my internship at the firm, um, which I would absolutely go into a firm later in life, but I realized right out of college as you know, a young person, having known the people who work on Capitol Hill, it's very much a young person's game. I mean, it's pretty, <laughs> the government's pretty much run by like mid 20s, <laughs> early 30s people. Um, and at a firm, you know, you have people who are very high up and you, there's kind of that distance, right? And I feel like there's less of that distance on Capitol Hill. Um, and neither is right or wrong, I just knew based on my internships, what I wanted. So um, seek that counsel from your mentors, of course, but based on your experiences, your internships, whichever one, whichever work environment that you like the best, um, go for that. There's not a right or wrong answer. Just go with, with what feels best to you. Can I just uh, tag Please. on? Because the same thing, I actually worked almost two years, two and a half years before joining the campaign and then mm. having the position I have now. You can do more than one. You can change your mind. Mm -hmm. You can advance. You can open up different doors for yourself. By so you don't have to feel like if I get if I'm entering into public, then I'm going to only have to stay and wrap in public. Oh, yeah. You yeah. don't have to say if I'm going to be private that I'll always you know stay the private side. You have those options, and it, again, it's like Emma said, it's what you feel most comfortable with and what you feel best you know suited for, prepared for. However you want to, however you frame it. 
but it's really great that you're doing kind of both. Yeah, people go back and forth all the time, yeah. all day and long. And people so. don't know yeah. the opportunities that are, excuse me. No, no, I love this because I, I was thinking about my own career. You all are bringing up so much about, you know, my path. And I used to uh, go from, if it was an even year, I worked on a campaign. <laughs> Those campaigns. That okay, <laughs> if it was an odd year, I worked on the Hill. <laughs> Because I often, if I didn't like the people running things, <laughs> I went out and ran the campaign to try to get more people to run for office. So I like the fact that you can go outside now and work at a private company and as well as intern on Capitol Hill. Public service is such a great experience and one of the reasons why I love this lecture series is that Kobe King also had a career similar to many of you where he graduated from this university along with his beautiful wife, uh, Gwendolyn King, and went on to have careers in public service. So thank you so much for that great question. I have a question from someone on Facebook and they wanna know, how should students protect their brands when engaging on social media if you want a career in politics? And I'm glad you all can answer this question because as you know, I've trended a couple of times. <laughs> Just a few times. <laughs> really? We see your name pop up sometimes. <laughs> Only on Sundays. <laughs> but, but, but how do they protect their brands? Uh, just don't tweet. <laughs> if, no, that's if not the, possible. If you're, if it's silly, um, I would say, um, I mean, social media is a great tool to engage with mm -hmm. people, right? Um, follow the people that, you know, that you look up to. If you find someone on LinkedIn, find them on Twitter. I'm sure they're tweeting about, you know, the work that they're doing. Um, you know, uh, you know, I follow me. I find out a lot of my HUD news from following Megan. Same, same, same right back at you. <laughs> probably finds a lot of DL news. So, um, engage with people that way. Um, and I think that can also keep you visible, right? Um, uh, so that, yeah, that would be my only advice. If you're having <laughs> a bad day, should you just put the, you know, iPad or iPhone or Android? Even on the good Android? days, okay. even on the good days, <laughs> you should be deliberate with what you post. Mm -hmm. um, you should be deliberate with what you post. And also, it's a great networking tool. Mm -hmm. But also, it's a community, it's, it's a, its own community. Mm -hmm. So be cognizant of who you surround yourself with in your social media spaces. Mm -hmm. Um, and the message that you want to share with them. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest that's, thing. That's really a good advice. I should, I should have listened to you a couple of years ago. So come on, um, Madam Lawyer, uh, mm -hmm. give us uh, this perspective from a brand yes. perspective. How do you keep yourself brand and authentic, really? I would just challenge, if you're thinking about your brand, your brand doesn't just live on social media. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. you had a brand before you joined Twitter. You know, so, so a brand exists you, you are already a brand. You don't have to tweet every day. There are other ways to go about building a brand. It is about if you want to be in fashion, start having coffees and connecting with that people in that community. That's how you start building a brand amongst the people that are thinking about like, oh, I have an internship opportunity in my office. Oh, I, I met someone who, that's part of your brand. Or, um, but I would also say, you know, if, if you decide that social media is an active part of your brand, just don't do anything that, you know, you wouldn't want on the front page of the Washington Post um, or the Hilltop <laughs> or, or anywhere else. Um, you know, as Emma said, you know, if, if it's about sharing news in the industry that you want to be a part of, I think that's a great way. You don't always have to be provocative. <laughs> you could just be some a source of news, mm -hmm. a source of information. Um, being a helpful voice in that space that you're in is is often what what you know you're trying to do. So I would just challenge you to think about what your brand looks like. But I also say you don't also have to have a brand. I know, you know, as public that, relations folks, that's true. You know, you're not supposed to be the story, right? You're, right. We're supposed to help our bosses and and those and the the that's issues true. that we're working on behalf. So, so we you never you never want to be a distraction for that that's too. Right. That's right. So, yeah. And I, I was taught back in the day that right as if um, what you're doing could be on the front page of the New York that's Times. Right. And I've, I understand the difference. Um, and I'm so glad that you all are talking about protecting the brand, or, you know, uh, network. And w you are giving the students so much insight into how to build their careers, starting here at the hilltop. Mm -hmm. um, that path is, is one that they can blaze if they are dedicated and committed um, to their mission. And so I want to start closing by asking each, each of you, as you sit here today, 
and now you're not talking to the 18 year old self you're looking at that 40 50 60 year old self and where do you want to help take not only your career but perhaps what do you want to help take America in the future so that's a broad question but how it is preparing you for greatness and so perhaps you can uh, share some of your vision I will share that, that one of the things that Howard's Law School taught me was to, to be comfortable blazing my own trail. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't have to follow the traditional path. If you are in PR, you don't have to just go to a, a PR firm and do traditional PR. Blaze your own path. That's what makes you unique. That'll make you, that will be what allows you to add value in a place. So I have found that to be the space that I want to continue operating in is to be, there's no copy of me. <laughs> um, and I want to continue to to find ways to do that while also serving my community and the people that look like me. Um, I think that that's that hopefully older me will will be proud of what I'm doing today. Um, but yeah, I just want to continue to to do to do what I feel is right and mm -hmm. and have a unique journey. Excellent. And I think um, to I, you know I echo Megan's sentiments and also to to related to the advice that I would give my 18 year old self is also. Um, and yours, it'll be okay, right? And I think that that's, mm -hmm. as I've gone in my career, that's changed. I used to worry a lot about what I was doing next, and now it's not so much. Now I know that, you know, based on the network that I've built and the knowledge that I've gained, that um, everything will work itself out. So I'm really just focused on making sure I'm doing the best job that I can now and helping people that come behind me yeah. um, and just continuing to do that for as long as I can. Mm -hmm. Salas. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, making sure that when I look back, I know that I did the best job I possibly could um, at this moment to prepare me for the future opportunities and the future um, opportunities also to just help amplify and support my community. Um, I think that when I want look back, I want to be proud of the work I did, but I also want to know that I, I didn't shortchange uh, the opportunities that um, eventually got me to where I would will eventually be, hopefully. <laughs> whatever that is <laughs> you can make it as you go along yeah you know as a as a graduate um the day after graduation i knew i was coming to washington dc it was 40 years ago this month that when i arrived i believed there was a rally here on howard university campus to help make martin luther king's birthday a national holiday i signed up and two years later we had the holiday and so as we leave this conversation, I want you all to continue to aim high, to continue to represent us, Howard University, and much, much more inside the Biden-Harris administration and to break every barrier you can and leave it a better, much stronger place um, when you decide to go on to your next journey. We're so proud of you, Emma, Silas, Megan, for not only the great work that you're doing now, but the, the work that you will also do in the future. So thank you so much for joining us. And um, please come back as often as possible. Uh, this semester, we're going to have a lot of events and we hope to draw upon your experiences and keep us on your mailing list so that we can stay in contact. I'm sure many of the students who were not able to be here with us in person would like to know more about your journey. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I want to thank everyone for joining us today, especially our panelists, Emma Eatman, Megan Lynch, and Silas Wood. We're so immensely proud and thankful you were able to participate in today's important conversation and to help shine a light once again on black excellence, especially when that excellence stems from Howard University. Thank you again. Good night. God bless you all. H-U. You, you know. know. <laughs> Thank you.